Hi, I'm Christina Whitney from the Handy Quilter Studio. I have a new ruler that I'd like to share with you today. It's the HQ Twirly. Take a look at this. What a fun ruler. Before we begin playing with this ruler though, however, I'd like to cover a few safety issues. The first thing that you want to do is make sure you have a sure foot on your machine. The higher profile allows you to have a little bit more safety with the ruler and prevents it from hopping over. You'll also want to use handy grip. I don't know that you can see this, but I've got handy grip all over on this ruler already so that we can quilt with it. And make sure you also have a ruler base. Make sure that you have the ruler facing up the correct direction so that the etching lines will be better visible as you're doing your quilting. And to double check that, just make sure you can read the name on it. Here's a quilt block that we've quilted using this ruler. It's a friendship star that goes along with our pre-cuts. And you'll notice that we have one swirl coming in, one over on this side, and just rotating all the way around, filling that space. It's such a fun ruler. Okay, look at this fun design. I have been having such a blast working with this ruler. Check out these nice curves coming in and out. So what I did was marked a grid with our reference lines and starting from the center point. And let me show you how we finish it. So I'm gonna bring my thread up at that center point. Do a quick little tie off, lifting the needle so that we can slide the ruler over top. And then I'm going to drop the needle just to hold it in place while I position this. So if you notice on this first swirl that I stitched, I lined up this grid mark with my reference line. So that's the mark I'm going to be using and I'm going to slide it over, line it up with this blue mark that I already have using some firm pressure on my ruler. I'm gonna stitch up. Hugging onto that ruler, coming back. And this is where it's very important that you have that handy grip to prevent your ruler from shifting on you. Okay, once again, we're going to rotate using the grid marks holding the ruler firmly in place. And I'm gonna stop here so that I can readjust my hand to get a better grip. And back to the center. So there is our finished design. And you'll be able to see a little bit better on here that we've got grid lines going from this center point up through the middle and then coming out at different angles. So those can be used to tilt the ruler in different directions depending on what kind of a look you're going for. Okay, here's another feather wreath that um, is a similar concept to the previous design where we've got a radiating grid with reference lines. So let me show you how we finished that one up because it's a little bit different. Okay, lifting up our needle, let's slide that ruler into place and then I'm gonna drop the needle so that I can position my ruler. So once again, I'm using that same grid marking to line up with my design. I'm going to hold my ruler. Now as I'm coming around, I'm going to stop. I'm not going to do the full swirl. I'm stopping right here at my previous line and then coming back. And stopping in the center. Rotating. And again, I'm going to come up. Stopping at the previous stitching. Now you'll notice that this one doesn't quite connect. I wasn't sure how far I needed to go, so what I'm planning to do is just 
put the ruler back in position and I'll stitch over just to get that last little portion stitched out. And let's move this out of the way so you can see what it looks like. Okay, let's see what else we can do with this ruler. I did a fun little border here where I set the ruler down, stitched it out, but I used a continuous curve ruler, my curvy, and stitched this next line. Then went back to this ruler and just continued along. So you could do just one section or you can add the bottom row as well and continuing all the way around if you need to fill a bigger space. Let's move on over here. Similar concept, but from a center point. This one's a little bit trickier. So what you're going to do is stitch one side. And then what I did was rotate it all the way around, stitch this next one, then take the ruler off and flip it over. So for something like this, I would recommend putting handy grip on both sides of your ruler. And this one's a little bit harder to be able to see the etching lines, but we're just trying to get that reference point so it's um, not as difficult. So we're gonna stitch this side, rotate it around, and stitch the last side. And you could also connect it and continue on if you want to do a full border using that design. Okay, one more that we want to go over. This one is only using a portion of the twirly ruler. So I started and I marked my ruler with some painter's tape so I would know where to start and stop. So I just stitched part of it, stopped, flipped the ruler over again, stitched the other side, and then I traveled along till I got to this next section and then repeated again flipping the ruler on every other one. So the twirly ruler is a lot of fun to work with. So many different things that you can come up with. I can't wait to see what you do with yours.